the fabulous duty of having to introduce a man that really doesn't need an introduction. You know Ms. Jack Bauer. I get the call of my friend, Mr. Cupert Sutherland. So it's season eight. You look up, look up at the satellite. You say you're, you're going off the grid, and 24 ends. And then you get a phone call. Was it uh, your worst nightmare or a dream come true when you got that phone call? <laughs> <laughs> or somewhere in between, maybe. Well, honest, honestly, I, I, I think, you know, and this is a conversation with Howard as well, uh, I think we left it open at season eight because I think we had every intention of doing a film. Uh, and for a variety of reasons, that did not end up happening. Uh, this character has been the greatest gift in my career. So when I get a call from Howard, and I think I was doing a play on Broadway at the time, uh, when I get a call saying, I've got this great idea, what do you think about doing it again? There's five minutes of poshing, oh my gosh, I could never do that, no, 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 we put that to bed, when do we start? You know, it's <laughs> kind of like that, so it's, it's uh, but it was, it was a, you know, I was, I was happy to get the call, and I don't think it took us long, all of us, you, myself, Howard, uh, I, I think we, <laughs> we re-signed up pretty quickly. It's a different Jack Bauer. We saw a slightly different Jack Bauer. He's meaner, leaner, throws people out windows. He's just no remorse. One of the things, we were so cognizant of trying to bring this not necessarily to a close, but, but certainly evolve from what we've done. And, and, and we all have too. I mean, we've gotten older and everything else. And so the thing that I liked about, I, I went back and watched the very first season and, and most importantly, the very first episode. Uh, there was so much hope in this guy. You know, he was, work he, was in his, he was in his kitchen with his wife. He smiled a lot. Yeah. And, 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 the evolution of this guy is now he's, with everything that he's lost and everything else, that he's run out of patience. And so there is a much more aggressive nature to the character in the context of season nine than anything else because he's done. He's, he's not fighting for his own life anymore. He's trying to carve out something that he thinks is right for himself and, and, and the planet and maybe trying to protect his family but there's nothing in his immediate future that he's fighting for, which is a very different tone. Yeah, very different. This is a thing that I've had to talk to other actors about. We were trained, and certainly when I started working in the early 80s, television was, that was the end of your career. If you were doing television, that was the last stop Texaco, and the next thing else was commercials, and then you were dead. You were doing... <laughs> You were doing Chekhov in Poughkeepsie, <laughs> you know. Um, and, and the fear of television was playing a character over a long period of time. And so I tried to explain to other actors, no, you've, you, you've got to try this. This is amazing. You get to develop a character over X number of years, and the character doesn't stay the same. You, the character changes. And if you look at Jack Bauer from the very first episode, to the very last episode, they're very two different men. Uh, it's actually one of the greatest, one of the most rewarding acting opportunities that you could imagine. Uh, and so my experience in television uh, was extraordinary for that. You tried to save someone once, the, late, the little old lady being beat up. Oh my the... gosh, yeah, no, that was bad. <laughs> there, well, this is an awful story. The, <laughs> I was, yeah, driving, I, I was driving down the street, and, and for those of you who are from Los Angeles, it was on Olympic, and there's not a grocery store for miles, and there's this old woman carrying groceries, and I'm like, oh my God, how far has she walked? And literally at that moment, two guys accost her and steal her purse. So I jump out of the car, I grab one kid and I hit him, knock him down. <laughs> I grab the other kid, he goes, no, 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 no. And then I hear all these other kids screaming from across the street, and they're making a student film. <laughs> and, and, and.
Okay, for a real quick question. Uh, do you mind giving me a damn it? A huge damn it, please. <laughs> it's so hard to do it just kind of. <laughs> damn it! Thank you, everybody, for coming today.